The A-10 Thunderbolt II, often known as the Warthog, has quickly risen to become the internet's favorite warplane, owing in large part to the distinctive burp sound it produces when it fires its enormous 33mm cannon as it takes off. It's exceedingly unlikely that the Fairchild Republic engineers who created the A-10 could have predicted the legendary reputation that the aircraft they designed would achieve, let alone the fact that it would still be in service 50 years after its first flight. After all, Although the A-10 was built to withstand a lot of hardship, it was also built to be inexpensive and simple to repair. So, in today's video, we are going to go over the history of the A-10, and then we will also take a look at the new and improved A-10. So, what exactly is the A-10 Thunderbolt fighter plane? The A-10 Thunderbolt II is a single-seat, twin-engine, straight-wing combat aircraft that was developed in the early 1970s. The Warthog is a twin-engine aircraft that provides close air support to ground troops. It is capable of carrying a broad range of conventional arraignments, including general-purpose bombs, and can fly at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. This simple, effective, and survivable single-seat aircraft can be used against any ground target, including tanks and other armored vehicles, when deployed against them. The first production A-10A was delivered to Davis Monthan Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona in October 1975, marking the start of the A-10A production program. In September 2007, the A-10C was modified to the point of achieving initial operational capability. The airplane's combination of big and diversified ordnance load, extended loiter time, precise weapons delivery, austere field capabilities, and survivability, which were specifically built for close air support has proved to be very beneficial to the United States and its allies in combat situations. In addition to Desert Storm and Southern Watch, the aircraft has participated in noble anvil deny flight and deliberate guard operations, as well as Allied Force Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom. Building on the General Electric GAU-8A Avenger 30mm gun and its seven barrels, the A-10 was meant to wreak havoc on Soviet tanks on the plains of Northern Europe the cannon is capable of dishing out catastrophic harm to armor. Over the years, the Warthog's 11 hardpoints have developed from carrying dumb iron bombs and rockets to hauling the most advanced guided munitions available on the market. Despite earning a terrible reputation during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and changing with the times as new technology became available, the legendary ground attack aircraft has consistently come under criticism from inside the Air Force when it comes to budget cuts and reduction in personnel, which led to the A-10 aircraft being considered for retirement. So, what are the design characteristics, you might be wondering? The GAU-8 Avenger is a large rotary cannon that serves as the aircraft's main armament, was the inspiration for the A-10's design. The A-10's airframe is armored with more than 1,200 pounds of steel and was built with survivability in mind. It has protection systems in place that allow it to continue flying even after suffering major damage. At low air speeds and altitudes, the A-10 is a highly maneuverable and survivable weapons delivery vehicle that delivers extremely accurate and survivable weaponry. For lengthy periods of time, the aircraft can linger near conflict zones and perform in low altitude and visibility conditions. The aircraft's large combat radius and quick takeoff and landing capabilities allow it to fly into and out of areas close to the front lines. Night vision goggles allow A-10 pilots to fly missions in the dark while wearing their protective gear. Detailed technical specifications for the A-10 Thunderbolt power plant are as follows. There are two General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofans in total. Each engine produces 9,065 pounds of thrust. 57 feet and 6 inches is the length of the wingspan. The length is 53 feet and 4 inches. I'm 5 foot 8 and weigh 155 pounds. 29,000 pounds is the maximum weight. Takeoff weight, 51,000 pounds at maximum altitude. Carrying capacity of 11,000 pounds of fuel. Payload weight, 16,000 pounds. 450 nautical miles per hour is the maximum speed, or Mach 0.75. 2,580 kilometers of range, 45,000 feet is the maximum height. Armed with one 30 millimeter Gatling gun with seven barrels and up to 16,000 pounds of mixed ordnance on eight underwing and three under fuselage pylon stations, including 500 pound MK82 and 2,000 pound MK84 series low high drag bombs, incendiary cluster bombs, mine dispensing munitions, AGM-65 Maverick missiles, and laser guided electro optically guided bombs. 
During the same year that the A-10 was being considered for retirement, Operation Inherent Resolve, or OIR, the U.S.-led mission to demolish the so-called Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, was ramping up rapidly and pressure was mounting on the U.S. Air Force to increase its involvement in expanding the campaign. In the United States, the fiscal year 2015 funding proposal includes provisions imposed by the House and Senate Armed Services Committees that effectively prevent attempts to retire the A-10 aircraft. The A-10 was salvaged by a perfect storm that occurred at the right time. A theater security package was dispatched to Kuwait by the Indiana Air National Guard's 163rd Fighter Squadron, known as Black Snakes, in October 2014, and the unit deployed to the Central Command Area of Operations in November 2014. The unit was promptly sent to Afghanistan, where it was entrusted with assisting the United States Army's departure from forward operating bases in the war-torn nation. However, after barely a month in theater, there was mounting demand to return the Black Snakes to Kuwait in order to participate in the expanding counter-ISIS operation. The A-10s were put into combat missions almost immediately, a move that would serve to highlight once again the A-10s value to top military authorities in the future. The OIR mission evolved over time, and a series of Warthog squadrons were called upon to assist with CAS as well as combat search and rescue coverage for coalition operations as the mission evolved. So, now we come to the new and updated A-10. The decision to retire the A-10 has had a ripple effect in terms of support and improvements. Some supply lines were temporarily halted as a result of the projected termination of the A-10, but a continuous sequence of modifications quickly restored normalcy. The need to be survivable in a hostile environment is at the heart of the A-10's modernization efforts. This entails Warthog pilots escaping threats via the employment of standoff weaponry at extended ranges, as well as the application of new tactics to their aircraft. A-10 operations will grow to include the capacity to engage certain threats with precise weapons at long ranges, which will be a new capability. Once these threats have been neutralized, the A-10s will potentially be able to shift their focus to more typical combat operations. There are also ongoing attempts to improve the A-10's capacity to operate in remote locations with little or no assistance. As a result of improvements in technique, they will all contribute to increased preparedness and mission capability. The aircraft can fire weapons against several targets with a single button press and a single pass, when before this required a significant amount of pilot effort. Using joint direct attack munitions of the 500-pound class GBU-38 or 54, or the 2,000-pound class GBU-31, A-10 pilots can hit their targets with 500-pound class GBU-31 joint direct attack munitions, and the aircraft will notify the pilot if they can hit all their intended targets in a single run. Hybrid Optical-Based Inertial Tracker, or HOBIT, is a development of the Thales Vision X Scorpion helmet that A-10 pilots have been using since 2013. Suite 9 also contains provisions for an upgraded helmet-mounted site known as HOBIT. The new optical head tracker, which is comprised of a series of points on the canopy, improves the accuracy with which the pilot's head motions are tracked in the enhanced helmet. Suite 10 will have multiple target list upgrades, which will allow the pilot to engage numerous targets with three distinct weapon types in a single run, allowing for more efficiency. The system also has a complete AGR-20 APKWS integration, which enables the ability to target the rocket's maximum kinematic range with aiming solutions that are intended to be within rocket tolerances. Specifically, the HRDS is an 11.6-inch multifunction color display with a revolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels that replaces of analog instrumentation in the cockpit with a digital main flying display. A new map engine, as well as high-definition targeting pod video, will be shown here. Compared to the transfer of the A-10A to the A-10C, this is the most substantial cockpit upgrade. In the fiscal year 2018, funding was provided for a second project to deliver 112 extra wing sets for the remaining A-10C aircraft. The A-10 Thunderbolt Advanced Wing Continuation Kit, or ATTACK, program is responsible for the service's acquisition of the wing sets. It is not currently planned to re-engineer the A-10s, which has been a long-held dream of the Air Force. Instead of the small detune the aircraft now flies with, new component suppliers using contemporary technology may be able to assist in restoring the original engine thrust of the General Electric TF-34 engines. So, what do you think about the A-10 Thunderbolt? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.